Thank you. <clears throat> so I have to admit um, that I was originally going to talk about deep learning, uh, specifically in dumpsters and, and what we do in, in the waste business. But uh, I was having a couple beers with some colleagues earlier this week, and we were sharing our woes with each other. Uh, we all work in the connected device space. Um, and the result of that conversation I thought would be really pertinent to the audience here. So I decided to change things up a little bit. Um, and so sorry for the last minute change. If you guys are interested in talking about deep learning in dumpsters, absolutely, let's talk about it afterwards one on one. But um, for this session, I'm going to talk a little bit more specifically about uh, some of the challenges that uh, we have in selling connected device services into industrial businesses. Um, so to give you a little bit of perspective on where I'm coming from, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Compology. So what we do is we build a system that monitors the volume of waste inside commercial dumpsters, and we use that information to dynamically route collection trucks. So the premise is instead of using a set collection schedule of picking up from the same 70 containers every Thursday, whether they're full or not, every morning we're able to build a new route for drivers based on which containers actually need to be serviced. And the value to our customers, which are big waste hauling companies, guys like Waste Management, Republic Services, Waste Connections, Recology here in the Bay Area, is that we're able to remove between 40 and 50% of their collection trucks off the road. So that's incredibly impactful for their businesses. Um, what we do is we build this sensor that uh, retrofits into the waste containers, and that's monitoring how full they are by volume. We have a tablet which goes into the cab of each truck, and that's very tactically focused. So that's showing the driver where they need to go each day and how to get in between those stops. And then there is a piece of back office software that's designed for someone in more of a management position, and it zooms out a little bit and takes a much more strategic view on the business. Um, the whole idea here is business intelligence instead of just providing more data. So I brought one of the sensors that we build, and I'm happy to share it with you guys. We can pass it around. You can get hands on with it. Um, it's clean. It hasn't been in a dumpster yet, so don't worry about that. Uh, to give you perspective, a lot of people are familiar with these green tote carts that they might have at their home, but we work in the commercial and industrial containers that you'd see in blue on the right. Um, and you can actually see our little sensor, um, if there's a laser pointer, right there. So after many, many years uh, of working in the uh, connected device space uh, for industrial clients, oh, skipped ahead twice. Sorry, I think there's a delay here. Um, so after wor working in the uh, connected device space for many years, what we came to realize is that there, um, there's a theme that ended up emerging, which is that in order to be effective in selling into these industrial clients, you have to work within some confines of, of, the, of the current business processes. And so the themes that I'm going to talk about today, there's three problems that I want to walk through specifically. Um, those are all how to deal with selling into these industrial clients. Um, and so I squared OT is what we're defining as the industrial internet of things. And I wanted to take a step back and talk a little bit about what that actually means. So in this example here, we have kind of the traditional IoT, which what people think of. Everyone's familiar with the Apple Watch. Um, and at the end of the day, it's really much more of the form of the product over its function, right? So when Apple Watch counts how many steps you're taking, if it's off by plus or minus 10%, a, who really even knows, and B, who really even cares, right? You're still getting information that's useful to you. And at the end of the day, it's a little bit more of a status symbol than anything else, right? In the industrial space, it's the, the exact opposite. Where you can see here with Compology, uh, we didn't spend anything on industrial design. Um, and we spent all of our effort focusing on making sure that the sensor works every time. And building that trust with a customer in terms of making sure that the data is right um, is a really important piece to the puzzle. So the first challenge that I would like to discuss is around business model. And for our industrial customers, they're very comfortable with CapEx purchases and overhead. 
When they have problems, there is a current formula that they can use to calculate if I have a new contract, I need X number of new machines and X number of new bodies on my manufacturing floor in order to complete that, that, uh, that contract. In the waste business, we see it in terms of trucks and drivers. But in the connected device space, the value is really more on the data we're providing and not necessarily on the piece of hardware anymore. So we have to start to rethink about if the value chain is a little bit different, how do we provide a business model that's useful to our customers? And so at Compology, what we ended up doing is we designed a business model that was full service. So we maintained ownership of the sensors, we install and we maintain them. So the headache of managing technology is completely off of the responsibility of our customers. And we set up a recurring revenue model where there's no CapEx purchase. This falls on our P&L, so they get billed on a monthly basis for access to our software tools. And what's really nice here is that the model is simple. And I think that's something that I'd like to emphasize, where a lot of folks will come to us and say, well, Jason, can't you develop a model where you share in the savings that you're providing to your customers? And I would say, yes, absolutely. But a lot of questions end up coming up from that. How do you baseline? What is the baseline uh, of the current market? And how do you measure exactly the improvement uh, related directly to your product? Um, and being able to do that accurately is something that when you're at scale might be a little bit easier, but when you're a startup and you're a new entry into the market is very difficult. So we, uh, we emphasize keeping that model very simple. The second challenge comes around working with legacy infrastructure. And I'm sure this is something that uh, everybody is familiar with, but the time scale that we're looking on uh, in the industrial markets, people buy equipment and they expect it to last 15, 20, 30 years, right? Whereas in the more consumer markets, people are getting new phones every year. So in terms of the life cycle of a product, if you have a new technology, you can expect it to come out and be ready for next Christmas. Um, in the industrial space, we don't have that luxury. And so at Compology, um, our infrastructure challenge was in the container specifically. So you can see here, uh, there's a number of different container sides, shapes, uh, materials that they're made out, whether steel or plastic. And what ends up happening is that uh, the sensing technology that you use in these containers uh, becomes a big question, a big piece of the puzzle. We experimented with lots of different things, everything from ultrasound uh, to time of flight lasers that were uh, part of um, Swiss missile products. And uh, at the end of the day, what we ended up finding to work the best is optics. So what we do with our sensors is we take an image of the inside of the container, compress it, send it through the cellular network, and then we are able to process that image server side to determine how full the container is. And so having to deal with this legacy infrastructure was something that we said, well, I mean, if we had it our way, we would replace all eight and a half million containers in the United States with spiffy new Compology containers that were designed to optimize around uh, the monitoring. But at the end of the day, that's not realistic, right? So um, the constraints here uh, really informed the way that we designed our technology, and then again, looping back to that business model that we had originally designed. So the third big challenge is that in any industrial business, you're stepping into an environment where the current process already works. And I think that's something that's important to point out that a lot of the times with more consumer focused internet of things, you're creating a new market and you're starting with a clean slate and everyone's perceptions of, of what you're creating are new. You have a lot of opportunity to influence that. But in the industrial space, the fact of the matter is, is you're walking into a currently operating business which is generating revenue. And whatever problem you're solving, that business has seen before and they've figured out some way to solve it in a way where they can still make money. And so the perspective that they have on new technology coming in, I think this plot actually does a really nice job of describing. So in the lower right-hand corner, you kind of have the current state where the technology, it's low tech, but high reliability and low efficiency. Right? They're more worried about delivering a consistent product to their end customer and making sure that that product or service is delivered on time than anything else. You see, when technology works out really well, you have the high reliability 
and high efficiency. And that's the best, right? That's where you're saving money and everybody's happy. But the flip side of that is if the technology fails, you end up with low reliability and low efficiency, and that's when everybody is losing money. And so that's where uh, you see the risk in a lot of these industrial services businesses where they don't want to uh, uh, worry about implementing a new technology because what they have in, in, in place currently works. Um, and so at Compology, we take a little lesson from Vince Lombardi um, and that football breaks down to two things, blocking and tackling. And the way that we interpret that is uh, to do fewer things really well. And I see a lot of businesses that get excited about all the potential and all the features that they can add and the value that all these different things might, might give to their customers. But at the end of the day, if you're able to do one thing really well, that provides tremendous value to our customers. So uh, specifically with Compology, when we first started out, we focused very much on making sure that the data that we were collecting was accurate and timely. So making sure that when a sensor took a measurement, the duration in between when the measurement was taken and when the measurement was presented to our customer was very short. And then that measurement compared to a manual measurement of actually going out and measuring how full the container was, those two were very close. And that ended up building the trust with our customers so that as we added more advanced functionality, uh, they had faith in what we were doing. So selling into these industrial customers is not easy, just like with any business, but I think the three things that I wanted to highlight were that the business model has to match the appetite for your customers, that the infrastructure that's currently in place should provide a framework for the way that you design your products, and that the um, doing fewer things really well ends up building trust with your customers and allows you to scale future products much faster. So a shameless plug, if you guys are interested in the types of problems that uh, I've been discussing today, I would encourage you to reach out. We're actively hiring here in our San Francisco office, um, much on the, on the software development side and on the operations side. So if you yourself are interested or you know somebody who might be a great candidate for us, please do not hesitate to reach out. Thank you, and I'd like to welcome any questions.